In this video, we will be looking at the structure of proteins and how to determine the presence of proteins. Proteins are made of amino acids. Amino acids are the monomers that make up proteins. This picture here shows the structure of an amino acid. This central carbon is attached to a carboxyl group, an amino group, a hydrogen and a variable R group. The R group can be any chemical group. Each amino acid has a different R group which allows the different amino acids to have different properties. Amino acids join together by forming peptide bonds. The OH from the carboxyl group and the hydrogen from the amino group are given off as water to produce a peptide bond. This bond is formed between the carbon of the carboxyl group and the nitrogen of the amino group. This forms a covalent bond between the two amino acids but we always call a bond between amino acids a peptide bond. So, when the two amino acids bond together, the bond is called a peptide bond, and the two bonded amino acids are called a dipeptide. If more than two amino acids join together, we call it a polypeptide. Now we will look at the structure of proteins. The first stage of protein structure is the primary protein structure. The primary protein structure is the sequence of a chain of amino acids. The sequence of amino acids is important because this will determine how the protein folds and it affects the shape of the protein later on. For example, the amino acid cysteine contains the element sulfur. Two of these sulfur atoms can bond together to form a disulfide bond. The sequence of amino acids is important. If the primary structure only has one cysteine, no disulfide bonds will be produced in the tertiary structure. For disulfide bonds to exist, you would need to have more than one sulfur in the primary sequence. In the primary sequence, only peptide bonds are formed. The second level of protein structure is the secondary protein structure. Here, the straight chains of peptides begin to fold. The peptide chains can fold into an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. These structures are held together by hydrogen bonds. The tertiary structure of a protein is when the protein folds into its final three dimensional shape. Most proteins in the tertiary structure are now functional. The tertiary structure of a protein is held together by hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, disulfide bonds, and van der Waals interactions. The final level of protein structure is the quaternary protein structure. This is when two or more protein chains that are in the tertiary structure are joined together by disulfide bonds. There can also be non-protein groups attached to the protein. For example, iron is important to the function of hemoglobin and they are both bonded together. To test for proteins, we use the Burette test. In this test, you place a sample in a test tube and add an equal volume of sodium hydroxide solution. This is done at a room temperature. You can then add a few drops of dilute copper sulfate solution. If the solution is blue, this would indicate that no protein is present. If the solution turns purple, this would indicate that a protein is present. The key points to remember are Amino acids are made of a carbon attached to a carboxyl group, an amine group, a hydrogen and a variable R group. Two amino acids are joined together by a peptide bond. Peptide bonds are covalent bonds between the carbon of a carboxyl group and the nitrogen of the amino group. A condensation reaction takes place where water is lost from the bond. To break the peptide bond, water needs to be added and a hydrolysis reaction takes place. There are four levels of protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. Proteins are useful in antibodies, hormones, carrier proteins and enzymes amongst others. Proteins can become denatured. This means that the tertiary structure of the protein is altered which changes its shape and function.